Hello and welcome to this session of generators in Python. Today we are going to talk about a very unique concept in Python about generators and when we will see why they are useful. So what's in it for us today? We will talk about what is a generator in Python. We will talk about the advantages of using generators and the utility of the next function which allows us to operate with generators and print the values within the generator. So we will see these all these concepts with an example. Now, what is a generator in Python? Python generators lets you create your own iterative functions that return the traversal object with a sequence of values. So basically, when with iterators, you can only work on list, tuples, or sets, but with generators, you can convert your functions into iterative functions itself. And we will see that when we will be working on a Jupyter Notebook. Now, another important feature in a generator function is that a yield statement is used rather than a return statement. So basically, the return statement terminates a function entirely if you use it within the function and you know basically return from the statement while the yield statement pauses the function, there it is. And holding all its states, all its variables, or the values in the variables, and then continue thereafter on the successive calls. So basically in a generator function, you use yield functions and I will talk about the utility of this yield uh, statement within the generator function, how it helps in generating pipeline. But just to hold a thought over here and understand the concept, the yield statement basically holds the processing of the function at that point and if you make an invocation of that generator function again, it starts from there itself where you left it. As compared to return statement, return is a general exit. If you make an invocation of the return statement from a function, it will restart again from the beginning if you invoke it the next time and that's the basic difference. So what are the advantages of using generators? It's very easy to implement. The code syntactically, it's very simple. Within the few line of codes, you are able to achieve uh, the uh, you know functions and able to implement the logic. You can generate infinite sequence. You don't need to provide the range values, the starting and ending. You can generate an infinite value and I'll show you that with an example. And uh, generators are very memory efficient. They are the most memory efficient ways of processing huge data sets. They process the data incrementally and do not allocate memory to all the results at the same time. They do that incrementally. They really come in handy when implementing data science pipelines for huge data sets in a resource constraint environment where you have uh, you know, constraint on the RAM and the other resources of the hardware. Now, Another biggest advantage is pipelining with generators. Generator pipelines are a great way to break apart complex processing into smaller pieces when processing list of items. So basically you can break your complex code into smaller pieces and then invoke them as a generator recursively and we will see that how. But basically, you are making the complex code look simple and making it invoke in a pipeline fashion. Now, the another most important function in order to deal and operate with the generator is the next function. The next function is used to retrieve elements from a generator object and then print it. So that's how you basically interact with your generator function. You cannot do that until unless you don't use next function. So now let's quickly jump to our examples, which we are going to support for each of these concepts. Now let's start by basically creating our first generator function. I'm going to create a variable n and initialize it with one. And I'm going to do a print. This is just for my logging. 
and showing on the console that where we have reached and then i am going to say yield n okay so now here we are not exiting the a function we are just saying that just uh, you know this is the point if you invoke the function again the function will start from this point on now here you will increment and again this is the second checkpoint in the code and similarly this is the we are going to have a last checkpoint in the code now in order to create my generator now this is the my generator initialization my gen now if i use the next function and invoke my generator now my generator has been executed till this point right n equal to 1 now if i make a second invocation now it has moved ahead and printed the second so it is behaving like a loop it is now behaving like a loop it is behaving like an iterator uh, but i have not created any list i have not created any tuple but i am basically traversing through the variables through the sequence of the variables within my generator and if i again print it this is my last this is printed at last so all the checkpoints within my generator have been executed now the same example which i have over here let me call it in a loop okay so what i am going to do is i am going to remove these invocations and just replace it with a loop call right so this generator functions remain as is now instead of writing my next function three times i am going to just invoke my generator in the for loop and this will get invoked the number of times i have yield in my generator and my output should be the you know the these uh, logs which i have created and of course uh, the variables yeah so see now what has happened is now the output is all these three print commands have been executed plus the variable values of n has been in, uh, printed at each checkpoint 1 2 and 3 so when i initialize my item variable during the for loop this item consists of the variable values which are there in my generator now i am going to show you example of if i use a return statement in my generator so i am going to create another generator and provide a value now in during this in middle of the generator i am just invoking the return and then i am printing my second checkpoint and then the last checkpoint now i'm going to initialize my generator now if i invoke my first element of the generator i'll get it there is no problem because i printed the first item i got the value of my yield and then i returned but now if i invoke my second element in the generator but before invoking second i have already given the return statement my generator will exit and i'll get the stop iteration error now this is a python generated exception which is denoting that you have you cannot move beyond the first item because you have returned from the generator over here 
So that's the difference. If you just remove this, comment this out, and then run it, you will get your second item. So it's not the code exits if you write return over here. So I hope you are able to understand the difference. Now let's take another example. Now here we are going to create a list and how a implicit list like the way legacy way we have been creating in Python differentiates like the way we are creating a generator. So what I'm doing is I'm creating a list with random numbers and then another list in which I'm just square rooting the numbers in that list. And similarly, I'm also creating a generator, which I'm expecting the same output in the new list as the generator, but I'm going to show you different ways of traversing the generator as compared to a list. Now, if you see this list underscore, if I just make a print call to this list, it's going to straightforwardly uh, square root uh, the numbers and give me the output 4, 9, 64, and 100. But if I print the generator, I will not get the expected output what I'm expecting. I will just get the generator object, which is not what I desire. So basically, you can't just print the generator like the list. You have to either use the next or you have to use the for loop which i had shown earlier and print each and every item within the generator now this is the output which i was expecting i was expecting the line by line output of each and every element in my generator 4 9 64 and 100 okay now this for loop is taking care that it is not exceeding the number of items, the length of the items in the generator. So this is automatically taken care by this syntax. But if you don't take care of it, then you will get an exception. Let me show you another example. If I create a list and now I'm creating a generator, which is square of square of all my elements. So now one by one, Instead of the loop, I'm one by one printing the output. Second output. Third element output. Fourth element output. Okay, I have four. Now if I try to again print, I'm exceeding the uh, length of the uh list i'm gonna get an exception stop iteration exception because i'm exceeding the length right either i use the for or if i'm using individual print a uh, next function then i have to take care that okay how many elements are there in the list and i cannot exceed beyond that else the python will uh, raise an exception okay now I'll show another example of highlighting the difference between next and the for loop printing. I'm going to create a, a generator for 2 to the power n. So I'm initializing n with 0 and then just raising it 2 to the power n. Now here I'm initializing my generator and printing it. And I'm getting the expected output as 2 raised to the power 0, 1. Okay. Now, another way of doing this job is I loop over this and I get the same output. So, if you see, it's only, I do not have only one element. So, either you use for loop or you print using next, the output is going to be same. Now, another important concept which I talked about, if you want to print infinite, infinite numbers, so, or you want to do some infinite calculations, I'm going to use print in all even numbers. So I'm going to write a generator, which is going to print 
infinite number of even numbers. So I have created a generator and now I'm going to invoke this and mind you, I have to kill this uh, job because it's going to keep running. It's going to keep running, keep running because it's constantly generating the numbers, even numbers. So I would have to stop this. But if you see, otherwise this is not possible in any for loop, the basic for loop, you have to give a range start and end of the length, but using a generator, you can do infinite looping. Right, because here I have to kill this job. I have to do a keyboard interrupt. Now I'm going to show you an example of how you can use generators for creating a pipeline. So I'm going to take example of Fibonacci series. Create an example of Fibonacci two variables initialized with zero and one. And now I'm going to write the logic of Fibonacci, adding the two numbers to itself subsequently. And I'm going to add yield. Now this is my generator. This is my one generator. And I'm going to create second generator of square. So I'm going to show you in Excel what logic I'm going to apply and what will be my expected output. So I am now squaring the numbers which I'll get out as an output of Fibonacci. Okay. Now I'm going to, I'm creating a pipeline like this. First, I'm going to generate Fibonacci series for the first 10 numbers. Then I'm going to find the square of each of the Fibonacci numbers and add it. So if you see this representation in Excel, I'm going to generate uh, these are the two variables which I've already initialized X and Y. And from here on these 10 are my first 10 Fibonacci numbers. I'm going to find Calculate the square of these numbers 1, 4, 9, 25, and till 55, the square of 3025, and then add these numbers, and I should get the output of 4895. So if you see one function generator, second generator, and the third calculation. Now, this whole has been done in one single line of code. You have generated, created two generators and just invoked them in a single line pipeline. So entire looping and you know, uh, you don't have to write the looping operators, the for loop, and you don't have to worry about writing all that complex logic. It is all encapsulated within this. Now let me run and I'm going to expect this output 4895. And here is my output, right? So in the hindsight, what Python has done is it has generated these Fibonacci numbers, found the square of these numbers, and then added it in single line. And now this is the convenience simplicity, which I was talking about earlier. Now let's take another example of Fibonacci. I'm going to create a generator again, initializing A and B with 0, 1. And this time I'm taking an example of printing the Fibonacci in two different ways. Okay. I'm going to print the first five Fibonacci series number. The first way I'm going to do is I'm going to print the next function five times because I'm generating five. So let me run this. These are the first five Fibonacci numbers, zero, one, one, two, and three. And I'm also going to use a loop in order to print. So now in the loop, I'm invoking the five Fibonacci numbers and run it. So either you can make individual five individual calls or you can use the for loop, but the output is the same and you're using a generator. So that's all I had today for this session. I hope you had a great learning experience and I look forward to connecting with you in my next session. Thank you. 
Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.